What's up, Rockstars? How's it going? Today I'm going to be talking about 10 Kickstarter games that we will not be able to play because they were canceled or didn't funded. I'm sad about some of these. Some of these I can understand why. All of them are, I think, are kind of interesting to look at and go over. And so uh, let's just jump into it. As always, I'd like to start off by thanking my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Now, I know I say this all the time, so I'm going to change it up a little bit, just because I don't want you to feel like it's something you just wrote that I say, that I just kind of built it out. I honestly am appreciative. A hard drive of mine recently failed, and I was able to go and just buy another one real quick, replace it, and that was all thanks to the funds from Patreon. It literally came directly from that fund. I have a separate fund set up just from uh, YouTube revenue that goes into there and it's just reinvested right back into the channel and then some of my own money too because uh, these things are expensive. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to say thank you so much. It helps a ton. Additionally, anybody liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting, all that kind of stuff, it's always super helpful. Thank you so much. Let's go ahead and jump into this top 10 list of failed Kickstarters that we will not get able to play. Now, speaking of not being able to play, that's obviously could change. People can relaunch things, rights can be bought, they could come back from the grave, they could somehow actually deliver. If I had one of these, I'm pretty sure will, but it's been so many years and I'm still not very sold on the delivery date that it may as well not exist until it is a thing. At least that's how I get myself through the days. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into them. They are sort of in order of my interest, but also not really. I think some of them are just better talking points than others. Don't be too focused on that. Let's just focus on all these failures. Now, number 10 on the list is Coreball the Zero G Sport. Now, this was actually by Burning Games, who had done a few others. They only had one other canceled one. It was mostly RPGs with miniatures. Uh, this was kind of their first big push, as far as I can tell, into board games. And it was a big push. I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit, but they really went for this. It's kind of like Blitzball from Final Fantasy X, if you've played that. Uh, where it's kind of a, a you know, a, a, a soccer football kind of game with these kind of different floating jetpack squad people. Uh, but it, it had some really interesting things. First of all, it was like Big Child Creatives sculpted them. They were very sculpted. Uh, they had the different battle board that was like this, which I think was actually kind of interesting, right? I think that's a lot easier to do than just loads and loads of thick cardboard, I imagine. Uh, and then you get this kind of nice playing surface as well. I don't know about the glare, though. That's kind of probably the only thing I worried about that. But this is also a prototype. Can't judge it based off that. It was a cool idea, if nothing else. Uh, and so you kind of had all your different teams. It could be up to four players fighting each other. And again, I thought they had very good looking renders and miniatures. So they actually kind of went above just doing the renders and actually showed some of the, the uh, painted miniatures and stuff like that. But I mean, as you can see, they really focused on actually sharing the game and doing that stuff. There just wasn't enough people that wanted it. And you know, sometimes that happens. That's one of the nice things. I, I worry about that connection there, right? That doesn't seem like that's gonna hold very well. Um, it, it's one of those things where sometimes Kickstarter is useful to be able to see what's plausible and what's not. You're gonna see a lot of coverage by a lot of different uh, channels, by the way. I mean, they had videos and people talking about it and all sorts of different things that they were kind of going through and it just didn't work out well for them. Uh, just kind of the, the, the thing that happens sometimes, but it seems they haven't come back. Burning Games hasn't really done anything else. And so um, I'm assuming that was kind of it for the company, as far as I can tell, at least on Kickstarter, um, which is kind of a shame, to be honest. It's always sad to see something die off like that. Uh, especially when the effort looks like it was put into it. Uh, some of these maybe deserved it more than others. Uh, Coreball looked like was honestly trying to uh, be a fun game. Okay, uh, Borderheim, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, Chronicles. This was actually canceled twice. And then again, the company just kind of went off after that, which is, again, kind of interesting. This was a very, um, it, it was a first time creator and it was a big game. It was going to be a huge game. So you can see kind of the spread here. It kind of reminds me of like Aeon Trespass Odyssey, which also was a first time creator. Uh, however, you know, they had at least a miniature line that was up beforehand, a little bit of clout there, and maybe some more people actually handling it. But uh, the miniatures all looked quite interesting. You know, they're, they're quite uh, um, standing static. You know, there's not a huge amount of movement there, but 
Uh, either way, they look fairly quality. The early prototypes looked decent enough. And you got a ton of miniatures too. The design seemed interesting. Uh, in fact, what you got a ton of, like a really lot of, is all these, these map tiles. I mean, and then all the, all the little tokens and stuff that you got, and all the tokens were, you know, kind of nice thickness as well. It just, it like they really put some effort into making a ton of different, uh, stuff for this game and really believed in it. And, uh, to be honest, I didn't quite back, and I'm sure a lot of people didn't quite back. I didn't quite do it, but I was close to it. Look, look at this guy. That's pretty sweet. And then they got like a chick version of it too, which I kind of dig. Um, it's very interesting. You wouldn't think of, like eye horns being a, a, a thing for demons. So it's kind of interesting that they did that. Um, yeah, a, a lot of this kind of, uh, uh, look, look at this. I mean, just a, a ton of a, a nice wooden board here. They were definitely going all out when it came to this game. Like they were going in strong and they had, had all the renders. You know, so there's no concept art that's placeholding anything. It's all there. Um, they, they, even all these stretch goals that they showed early on, um, and I think this whole stretch goal thing, I'm going to bring this up later, uh, but that's definitely a thing to look out for is the stretch goals that aren't there from day one. Um, but it goes both ways. Anyway, there's, a, again, just some of the, and again, it just keeps going, right? I mean, they had a ton of that. But looks like it's gone for good. We'll never see the light of day on it, which is too bad. Next up, everybody's favorite Conan, Beyond the Monolith. <laughs> um, this was kind of interesting because... Uh, it didn't fund and they canceled it and they might revisit it later. The issue here, I think a lot of it was, again, perceived value and just explaining the darn thing. Um, if there's one thing Monolith struggles with, um, uh, first of all, they got great, in they always got good intentions, right? It's like, we're not going to do stretch goals. We're going to have a realistic goal. We're going to do all this stuff. The realistic goal is really rough as well. Um, but it, it they suck at explaining things, right? For whatever reason, I don't know if it's necessarily translation or just personality or what, but when it comes to explaining what it is you're getting, what you're doing, like this was a complex and convoluted Kickstarter where even I struggled to really comprehend if I have this, I want this. Like it, it, it's almost like you're trying to appease too many people. So when they went and just did the Conan thing and they're just like, okay, we're just going to appease the people who like Conan. Like it was so focused. The scope was so there. The idea of the audience was understood better. And obviously it went way better. So it, kind of an interesting synopsis there. It would have been very interesting. I know they had uh, Kaman on board for Zombicide. So they're going to do some Zombicide stuff like this. A very interesting idea, if not just not super well executed. So a lot of this you're going to recognize, but a lot of this, it's like, well, okay, we already had a lot of these too, which again, I think was what a lot of people's issue was. But anyway, uh, Beyond the Monolith, it was a cool idea. I'd like to see it done in a better way in the future because I still think it's a cool idea. Um, I like the idea of reusing my miniatures. I think that's a great thing. I And I don't have to buy as much, right? If I have the stuff. Um, but then the problem is like, okay, well, do you have more or not? And I don't want to store the same mini twice, but I also don't want to have a whole bunch of Bots have to get out. It's it's a hard it's a hard problem to solve, and I think no matter how many pros you have, you're gonna have some cons, and that's kind of the issue. Next up is Dungeon Boss is a board game. Now this one was kind of interesting. I remember hearing about this really early on. It's by Sandy Peterson. It was one of the few that he actually had to cancel. This one didn't make it. It was based off of a, a mobile game that I've never played, so I didn't care about that. Um, but it was kind of like, uh, I don't know. It was a very interesting style because if you look at all the miniatures, they're all blocky and square or whatever. And they came pre-painted, um, which at the time I was a painting. So I was actually more okay with that. But, um, it, I think this is the problem here. Like I actually read all this. I thought it was kind of cool, but not everybody's going to scroll through all of this kind of story thing to kind of explain the, the game. I think a simple GIF and a paragraph works a lot better for more people. Then, because it just goes on and on and on. I think this is what really hurt it there. Um, the other thing is, here will pledge a hundred bucks and you see what you get and it doesn't seem like a lot, right? Or the 250 pledge, it's like, oh, you added that many, but it still doesn't seem like a ton not for 250 bucks. The problem was, is they had a ton of, uh, stretch goals planned. I think you're going to get like 70 heroes or so, 70 other miniatures on top of the, the core pledge, but you don't see that right up front, right? When you see what up front is, oh, you want to pledge a hundred bucks for this. And that just seems silly. And of course it does. Um, you know, w w nobody would want to buy that for a hundred bucks. So it's one of those things where you're always paying for the stretch goals, right? It's why Marvel Unlimited is like 15 bucks at Walmart and you paid 60 on Kickstarter. It's not free. None of them are free. And then you have to pay for the shipping and the storage and all that kind of stuff. It costs money and 
if, if you don't have enough up front, then the value doesn't seem to be there. And Kaman has done this quite a few times too, in my opinion, where at the start, when they first launch it, I don't think the value is there. It's only when they add a bajillion stretch goals and they, you get more tiles and more enemy units and more variety and more items and all that kind of stuff that you start to actually feel like it's worth the money. Uh, so it's, it's, it's kind of a gamble. It's kind of interesting to see it not work here. I think it would have been cool. It looked like a kind of interesting thing where essentially you're going through, I think there was like 32 dungeons or something like that. There was a lot of dungeons you could go through and then you would fight the final boss at the end and you kind of had to like, um, roll and see what they, what, what the enemies did and like, oh, they're attacking with blue and judge who you're fighting against and stuff like that. It seemed like it had a lot of cool gameplay mechanics and a very interesting thing that I would love to play with my kids. And it didn't make it. This is probably the first one that I'm truly actually kind of bummed about. I think it looked kind of interesting. If it was either a cheaper price point or there was more value up front, I think it would have done a lot better. Next up. Okay, this is great. Uh, this is Massive Darkness. Not really. Uh, this is Overturn Rising Sands. This was not canceled. It was suspended by Kickstarter. That's because the CEO of Come On said... Hey, you need to take this down. This is clearly plagiarizing us because it kind of was. Um, this had some beautiful miniature renders. I mean, these renders look great. They had a great lighting. They had an interesting color. Um, it's a little too dark in the dark here, I felt, but the brown actually showed up really well. And either way, it just looked interesting and cool. There's no way those legs are going to be that skinny, right? They're not. They're renders, not miniatures, and renders can do things miniatures can't, and that's why you should never believe them, uh, unless you see a real thing. And when they did end up showing the miniatures, it looked kind of bad. Uh, this is what gets me. And you're going to see me talk about this several times. I love terrain. So I'm interested in Dungeons and Lasers. It's why um, I take out the Dungeons and Heroes box from Arena to use in other games because I just want walls. Um, or why I like the idea of walls in Wolfenstein. I love terrain and, and just, I like making it look more and more real, like the miniatures are actually there. I love it. I don't can't count how many pictures I've taken of the player board in a ma match of arena where like my guys come around a corner to zap some chick or something like that and I'll go down there and take a little picture. Love it. So this kind of stuff, I adore. So I was all over this. I thought the miniatures looked good. I thought, I mean, it... it it was one of the first real kind of Egyptian ones, and they got into like the mythos of Egyptian stuff with like Bahamut and Solomon's horse and all that. I mean, it just looked great. The archer riders uh, kind of shooting sideways out there was fantastic, I thought. It, it all looked good. I mean, it just... Look at that dragon. I want that dragon now. Just looking at it again, I want it again. It's got a camel. The only other thing that has a camel is Conan. And I mean, and at least in Conan, you get to punch it, but uh, floating... Uh, miniature, again, not possible, right? The miniature will not look like that. Um, either way, it just looked good. I was so... Look, look at these miniatures. Oh, man, it's going to be awesome. Okay, see, there's the dragon. Yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. Four-winged dragon right there, all snarling. Um, okay, so there was a ton of stuff, more add-ons and all this kind of stuff. So what, what was the issue here? The issue was that, first of all, it was all renders and no physical stuff really at all. And then when they did show it, it was kind of iffy. Another issue was the fact that they lied. They're not from Canada. They're from Pakistan, which Kickstarter does not allow you to do. Um, and they, they, we eventually found that out. And when we found that out, they're like, oh, well, everybody does it. It's how you get around the rules. It's like, well, getting around the rules is still breaking the rules. Like that's, no, you don't do that. Which is why I think it's always funny when other companies lie openly about where they're from because they can't legally do it from their, other, their actual company. It's like, well, if you can't legally do it and you have to side skirt the law, and the rules, and maybe you shouldn't do that. Um, and one of the reasons those kind of laws are in place is because of stuff like plagiarism and other countries not having really good laws around it and uh, creators trying to use that to their advantage. So, for instance, the rule book that they eventually posted, they didn't have a rule book at first, and as you can see, look, it broke 100,000 very early on, had over a 1,000 backers, people were loving it, it was going a very good track, especially for a first-time creator. Uh, was a copy paste of Massive Darkness as a rule book. Whole sections were copy pasted out of it, word for word. Even the format, even the page layout, um, it was Massive Darkness and they changed some things and then posted that as a rule book. Uh, additionally, this uh, Fox Tail Games logo, I guess it's not right there. Um, that right there is from Firefox, the tail, right? They just literally ripped it from the Firefox logo. So there was some questionable stuff going on here. And once they just took Massive Darkness's rule book and posted it there. Uh, 
the, the Command City. I was like, nope, nope, that's got to go, and had it suspended, and then they kind of disappeared and never came back. So won't ever play this game, which is too bad, because if they could have made it good, if they didn't start... And I can understand, as a first-time creator, wanting to take a... Especially at the time, Command was on fire. Like, Command was just doing well. They're doing, like, Green Horde and all this kind of stuff. Massive Darkness had just happened. They were they were rocking uh, Kickstarter at the time. Definitely kind of the, the leaders, really. Um, anyway, uh, I can understand doing that, and then, okay, let's do something like that. Uh, and then just to publish it like that was... It, the final nail in the coffin, right? It's just too much plagiarism and too much uh, promise without obvious experience. But oh, it's too bad because I think this would have been something uh, that definitely had a lot of promise. This this, this was kind of a bummer. And it was a wild ride to follow too. All right, next up, Relic Knights Second Edition. Now, all I have to say here is that it's not really Soda Pop miniatures; it's Ninja Division. Uh, fun fact, uh, I lived in the same city as where Ninja Division is, so whoever uh, runs that, I guess I've probably seen them outside at some point at Walmart or something. Who knows? Um, <laughs> this is actually kind of funny because I, I went and looked. I knew I wanted to talk about two things from Ninja Division. One of them was Relic Knights. I guess I'll talk about Relic Knights as a game first and then kind of... Um, uh, I'll, well, I'll, I'll move on from there, and, and you'll see. So, Relic Knights, style-wise, uh, is like a, a, a anime sci-fi, which you don't see a lot of. You really don't. It was almost kind of like Ghost in the Shell kind of stuff, and I thought that was cool. It had mechs, it had tanks, it had, you know, ninja cyborgs, it had all that kind of stuff that I think is cool. It had freaking neon cards, and then this, like, crazy colored board. And look at that terrain. You know I love that terrain. I'm all about terrain. If you got terrain in your game, I am interested. It's just that simple. I love it. Uh, also, they're normally a skirmish. The, the style was a bit too anime for me, if you know what I mean, by a little bit. But I could still I could still roll with it, um, even if you have this little guy here. In fact, uh, what we might get to is, but look at that. So you got, like, you know, the chick with a gun and a skirt. Like, it's just silly, right? Or, like, whatever this giant gun is and, you know, this... This crazy dude here and this robot and then you got like freaking Gundams over here and it was just again it was over the top it was crazy <laughs> look at those cards that's awesome <laughs> I love it um it, it just it looked interesting it looked very cool I love skirmish games I love terrain all about that so if we go to updates here they have one from July 29th that's like recent and it turns out this was posted on all the soda pop stuff and it says hey hey we are gonna make a game we promise here are zero pictures about us talking about what we have like hey we got some miniatures i'm not seeing them it, you know at this point it's so many years old and they so they made a lot of these relic knight miniatures actually and then they had archon studio make them archon studio made them and then was never paid and so they had all this stuff that they couldn't sell, that they couldn't do anything with. They ended up destroying them. They, you can't do anything else with them. You can't store them. They couldn't pay for the warehousing. They couldn't pay for anything. They were out of money. Now, what Ninja Vision's been doing is uh, taking some of these and like making a masterclass version of it and selling it for people to buy single miniatures. And then whatever profits they can eke from that kind of start putting towards delivering this. This might become a thing someday somehow maybe but as far as i'm concerned until that happens this is a game we'll never be able to play and so here it is immortalized on kickstarter with the uh emergency life uh, artificial life preserver going on right now uh with kind of unsubstantiated signs of life <laughs> like uh I, I don't know like maybe you're looking for the heartbeat and it's all flatline and the earthquake happens and it kind of jiggles a little bit and you're like ah it's alive no it's not it's dead Moving on from that, Super Dungeon. You know, you knew this was coming. If you knew Ninja Division and you saw Relic, you knew where it was going. Super Dungeon was the thing that killed it. Uh, it was just too big for them. They took all this money and then realized, crap, we gotta make all this stuff. This is what happens when you have too many SKUs, when you have too many stretch goals, too many boxes, too many things to do. This is a problem with all these, uh, um, uh, Kickstarter exclusives, right? Or these small little packs of like, you know, uh, here's five dice packs and 14 character packs and five expansions and all the... It, it's too much. Anytime you add a skew like that, you add so much to everything. And a, again, then it's just developing the darn thing, right? It's like you it, you actually have to develop this and theoretically balance it. And it, it just ended up being too much. Um, it, it was essentially Super Dungeon Explorer 
was uh, essentially Arcadia Quest. Uh, it played different and definitely a different style. I actually liked this style more. Like I like this character more than most anything I've seen in Arcadia Quest or even this guy here. Just kind of my personal preference. Um, it just seemed a little bit uh, cooler and less cutesy. Like it was cute, but a cooler version of it. Um, definitely a lot more into this than uh, Arcadia Quest style. So I was always kind of interested. In fact, uh, you know, the, the first few ones you'd even see in stores. Uh, and I was always tempted to get that, including even their like ninja game or whatever. But uh, yeah, this this again, don't ever expect to play this. I wouldn't. Uh, they claim they're going to try to like release some cool cards in a rule book so you can play with your uh, Masterclass minis that you're buying now that you didn't get what you paid for back then. I don't know. It's it's dumb uh, and it's it's gone. Okay, okay. Now hear me out. Hear me out. I can hear you freaking out here. I know. I know. I get it. It's going to be a thing. I'm sure it will be when that happens. Um, the Gambler's Chest in Wave 3 of Kingdom Death Monster is years late at this point. Um, and it's very much the star citizen of the board game industry, I feel. It's very well funded. You can see kind of a lot of the stuff they were doing here. This was one where just throughout the campaign they were just adding minis. And it just seemed like a cool thing. It's like, oh yeah, we're just going to have some minis, right? It's just kind of a Kickstarter exclusive kind of thing. Well, the problem was you keep adding to it, right? So it's scope creep. It's uh, not being okay and wanting to add more and more to it. And every time you add something to it, then you have to deal with more stuff. And so this is, I don't even think this is a final list. I think there's even more than this because it's not talking about any of the rules or anything like that. So in case you didn't know, uh, Kingdom Death Monster uh, Gamble's Chest is essentially advanced Kingdom Death Monster. Um, it's it's kind of the 1.8, if this is a 1.5. It's an update to the rule system and an update to the old uh, other o older rule system that some of the expansions have expanded on and just stuff like that, and we've gotten hints at. So it's very much uh, an evolution of Kingdom Death and a very, it's pretty much the Thing you want to buy if you have the core box you want to get the gambler's chest it's on there i think every black friday you definitely want to back it because that's the one to get because that's going to upgrade your game and make it essentially a bit more modern in design you see all these stuff like oh sworn and aeon trespass odyssey and even sequel cushion and primal in the future and all these kind of boss battler wild ascent even all these boss battler uh games have taken what Kingdom Death Monster kind of started a genre on and then they kind of iterated on it since then. Well, Adam Poots has been doing that too. He just hasn't released it yet. So maybe it'll release in time to kind of counteract those. Maybe it won't. I don't know. It was delayed to 2021. This is maybe the umpteenth time it's been delayed. I mean, it, it, it seems every time it gets close to delivery, it's delayed again because he's adding more to it, which is great. It means you get a ton of stuff. My scroll bar on this window is like this big. There's a ton of stuff in this. Uh, it's going to be huge. The people who got it for, I think, like 50 bucks or 100 bucks on the Kickstarter got a huge deal on it because he just keeps adding to it and adding to it and adding to it. The other problem I see is coming from like the video game space and playing a lot of free-to-play games and stuff like that. Um, once something goes free-to-play, uh, the money and where you get the money comes from a different source, right? It used to be I made Kingdom Death Moth. I made a game and I sold a game, and I got money for selling a game. Well, now he's not really so much selling new game stuff as much as getting a lot of money from, uh, you know, pinups and kind of collector's editions of miniatures and a miniature line, really, based off of a game IP, uh, which theoretically is fine, except he didn't finish delivering the game. Um, and it's not even that, I, I don't think he just doesn't care. I think it's that just as a person running a business, uh, that stuff takes up business time. You're going to have meetings. You're going to have design iterations. You're going to have to sit down with the designers, make judgment calls on prints and all this kind of stuff. And your time just gets taken up with the stuff that makes the business run. And what makes the business run is not the gamble's chest anymore. Uh, no, but not, this is not the money maker. The money maker is all of the little miniatures that you can get, which again, I think it's great that he has a miniature line, but that just invariably happens. And so less and less time is put in the design of this. That plus the scope creep and the inability to just deliver something, uh, is kind of what's the problem is here. So my mind, cut it wherever you're at, cut that scope off, say this is now that. If you want to do more, that's fine. That's for the next campaign. That's for Kingdom Death 2.0 or whatever you want to call it. I don't care. Um, but that way you at least push stuff out. You gotta have throughput, right? <laughs> That's what I think the issue is. Um, anyway, here's, here's a sweet looking crocodile. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, look at that. Cool stuff. I want it. Give me my Gambo's chest. Will we see it in 2021? Did they say early 2021? I don't know. It's August now and I, I guess we'll see. 
Next up, Mega Metro City. This one, I was, this was one of the few ones of this that I, I like backed. I was like, I want this game. It wasn't because of the creepy clown dude. Um, I grew up playing these styles of games, these kind of side scroller games, and I actually thought this ended up really well. I've heard people say it's clumsy. This does not look clumsy to me. I get it sped up a little bit. It seems very simple to me. You just plop one off and you knock off the tokens and then slide it over. Um, I could do that easily. To me, that's no real different than um, in uh, Shadows of Brimstone or any game like that where you just like, oh, reveal the next tile, right? Uh, Mansions of Madness, all this kind of stuff where you're discovering what comes next and you have to deliver it or, you know, like spawn it or anything like that. Like, oh, I opened a door in Zombies and I have to spawn on these things in these different rooms in the old style. Uh, I see that as no different. So I think this worked out fine. And I think, again, it just gives that feeling so good. It's got that kind of 80s kind of punk rock. It's got like a fake Raiden. It's got a fake uh, um, <laughs> like Slipknot character going on here. Maybe Death from uh, Darksiders 2. Who knows? Uh, it, it's, it's even got a fake Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. The design looked cool. The miniatures looked interesting and cool. I not have anything like that. Those chains. I'm all about the chains. You know I love chains. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I agree with the dad per se, but um, it just looked good. All, all the um, all the cards. Combat seemed interesting. The ability to kind of go into side rooms and then come over and you're moving, you know, kind of left to right. The Gundam model. They had a ton of different Easter eggs. It just looked like a ton of fun. I was all about this. It looked... Oh, it's, there's the Teenage Mutant Turtle guy. Uh, I was really excited about this one. I really was. Uh, it, it looked like good fun. Uh, again, terrain. Even if it's got a terrain, I'll take it. Give it to me. Um, it, it just looks good. In fact, when I covered this, they actually contacted me. And I, it's not like I received anything from them. I wish I'd gotten a prototype. I would have kept it. Um, a lot of people delete their videos. It's kind of weird. I don't know why you would do that. But whatever. Anyway, look look, look at all this coverage they had. Look at all this. Like That's insane. That this still failed. I am so surprised. Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what happened and how it didn't, but it didn't, and uh, they just couldn't come back from it, which is too bad. Uh, anyway, you're actually going to see my logo. It was the first time I ever gave my logo to anybody, actually. They're like, hey, can we, you know, put you... Look at that. Look at that. I'm right under the freaking dice tower, guys. Bam. That's what, num number four? I'll take that. You know, just right above on tabletop. Above Beast of War. Yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> anyway, it looked really cool. I was I was gonna be all about it, so it's kind of too bad that it uh, it it didn't work out. Uh, it's just unfortunate. Canceled twice. Just I I I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. I was excited for it. I really was. I thought it looked good. All right, my number one. My number one uh, won't be able to play. Angry Joe's and Jasko's Dragon Ball Z Adventures game. This one makes me shed a little anime tear um, every time. So, and yes, I see you, Destructo Disc Krillin. I see you, uh, Raditz. He never got Super Saiyan 3. Okay, so let, let me explain this. In fact, here, I'm going to, like, this was a real thing. This was a thing. Here, I'm just going to play this in the background. Uh, I don't have the sound on. Uh, though I remember watching this when it happened. So I, I'm a backer of the Street Fighters one. I'm excited about the Mortal Kombat one as well. Um, I, this is the one I was waiting for. I was waiting for the Dragon Ball Z version. He's going to do three. These were the three he's going to do. He even, he, you know, he had, you know, the rights to start developing it and all that, though he didn't have like approval of anything yet. Cause again, it was still in development here. He's talking about how you can fight on Kami Island and you can actually get like knocked into the house and, you know, stuff like that. And really do that Dragon Ball Z kind of power, powerful moves and whatnot. Uh, that would have been great. Um, the reason it's not a thing is because IDW is a jerk. Um, so IDW has now exclusive rights to do Dragon Ball Z board games, which is why when Kaman is doing a Dragon Ball Z board game, they actually have to partner with IDW to do it. So IDW gets their, you know, money hungry fingers on Kaman's game uh, just because they own the license to, to do this. And with that, Jasco either couldn't or wouldn't play ball with IDW or IDW said, no, we're going to partner with, come on, you don't get to make yours now. So we don't get this, which is unfortunate because even if I just wanted the miniatures, um, the quality that I've seen in the Street Fighters miniatures is amazing. Um, though I love skirmish games anyway, so you know it would have been all about playing the game too, especially if it's any good. But even if not just having the miniatures there, I would have been so happy with, I, I would have loved it. So it's so unfortunate to see how he was actually working on it, it was going to be a thing. It was as announced as it can be without being super official because it's still like the third game in a series 
and then it's taken because IDW wants to um, keep using their IP to sell and make money and stuff like that when they yeah, I don't know it just it just I it sucks because I wanted this uh, definitely more than even the come on one uh, of course I'm gonna love painting the come on miniatures but uh when I, I doubt it's gonna be a skirmish if it's a skirmish game great but I was all about a Dragon Ball Z fighting skirmish game that I don't know how that wasn't a thing before but it was going to be and now it's not I will never see it again and that is just a bummer it's a bummer um again anime tears every time I see this I just I, I cry a little bit get a little emotional um yeah, that's that's all I have. I'm gonna go and pause the video here and kind of swap back to me. So that's kind of my uh, list of ten Kickstarter miniature games that were canceled, why they were canceled, how much of a bummer it is that we won't get to see that. It's always, uh, I guess, interesting to see uh, how often these aren't canceled. How often they're they're not. Uh, when we look at especially these miniature board games. Um, these they're expensive to do. They have a lot of different costs because you don't know, have to do all these renders and stuff like that. You can't just kind of throw in a, a print and play and be done with it. Um, they're normally big and, and bulky and complex and with lots of tokens and cards and stuff like that. And uh, and, and so when I was kind of doing this research, by the way, I did this in reaction to uh, the Kickstarter games team talking about how 60% of all uh, board game uh campaigns like ever have successfully funded and delivered which is a huge number on kickstarter we got it nice you want a bad go to like the you know mechanical electrical parts or video games or something like that and you'll see how bad it is um i already mentioned star citizen <laughs> um yeah this is it it, it was kind of interesting to see how few actually haven't canceled and if they have they relaunched later or somehow got it out or found a partner or released it into some smaller parts and you can still get a light miniature market and stuff like that so they just didn't deliver like the whole campaign but they delivered the core box at least a lot of that kind of stuff has happened so there's not a lot actually to go through that just uh, that perked my interest that's interesting to me that just didn't work uh so if you have any that i missed it, and you want to like rub it in and make me feel bad link them down below uh, i would be interested in seeing them because if nothing else i think it helps us kind of do a little post-mortem right a little after action report a little uh, kind of discussion about okay what went wrong what could have done better i try to do that throughout this list and kind of share i guess my initial impressions on how it didn't work uh, i didn't have an answer for all of them i think some of them might just be perceived market value um, part of them might be that even if you have coverage it's not the right coverage um, for, for instance, uh, when I talked to Shadowborn Games and they mentioned that sharing their game with me was actually their best kind of marketing move. And I thought that was kind of interesting. I, it wasn't what I expected because I knew it had a lot of coverage elsewhere. Um, in fact, I think it had some exclusives with some other stuff. But my channel is kind of all about games like that. So it kind of makes sense. It's like, yeah, I might not have the biggest audience, but it's like, we speak the same language, right? You know, you and I, we, we, we get it. We understand each other. And maybe that's it. I, I don't know. I don't know. But it's just kind of interesting to see uh, um, what could have been. What could have been. Uh, hopefully, I don't have to make a list like this in the future too often. Hopefully, there's not too many. And uh, good games are getting backed. And if games aren't getting backed, then they deserved it. And it's not just because of poor management, uh, poor implementation, or poor planning. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, it's because it was a bad game and I don't care. Anyway, that's it. That's all I had. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed kind of going through it and walking down memory lane and seeing all these could have, would have, should have bins. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys very soon for some Senko Kushin stuff. Um, there's going to be, it, it's going to be an interesting video. I'll, I'll talk about it um, in the video. Uh, but what you're going to see from Senko Kushin isn't what you're thinking. So stay tuned for that. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.